Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I'd bring you a quick little project of making a multi-pocket over the page element that you can add to your junk journals. This will be the March challenge for the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. So I was watching, I forgot her name, all the something, something like zippity doodah, but I can't remember her name all of a sudden. And she showed a variation of this and I've, I've done stuff like this in the past. So I thought I would kind of put my spin on it. So I have a book page. This is going to be in the very back. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like because we're going to alter it. And the first thing I want to do is take this and spray it with some tattered angels glimmer mist. I've already picked out a couple of other elements that I'm going to put on top of this. So I'm thinking that the color I want to use will be the wild coral. It kind of has a coral color with a little bit of a blue mica tint to it. And I'm just going to spray the whole thing. And I'll use my heat tool to dry it. This Tattered Angels is part of the set for the Wild and Free kit, and it's a set of six colors, and this is one of the colors. All right, so now that I have this piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half, and I want it to have kind of a rough edge, so I'm going to tear it, removing the text off the edges. So I'm kind of looking at this, I think probably like that. And I'll put these in my little scrap bin. I may use them at a later date. All right, so now that I've kind of torn this, I may keep kind of fussing with it just a little bit. But the next thing I want to do is stamp. So it kind of obscures the text. So I have the henna rose. So here's the henna rose. I have a bunch of other rubber stamps too that are available in my shop. And I'm going to ink this with archival ink jet black and stamp it all over. Mostly around the edges because I am going to put other paper down the middle. So I didn't really need to stamp it there but sometimes I get carried away. Now what I want to do is go around the edges with some distress ink. I have walnut stain. I am using a heavier book page. If your book pages are thin or if they're brittle, you might glue a couple of them together. I like to make a pocket out of a little bit thicker paper than something that might tear really easily. All right, so I've got this piece. This is going to be my most inner pocket. And then I have another piece of paper here that is part of the Wild and Free Pattern Paper Pack. Say that really fast. Pattern Paper Pack. So I'll fold this in half. And I know I want it to fit over this. And it's larger than I need. So what I want to do first is going to rip down this edge. So now I know it is short enough this way. And now I want to tear down the sides. It's already ripped on one side. In fact, this one already has distress ink on it. So I'm just going to rip down one edge, see if that's enough. I may have made it too narrow, but I think that'll work like that. And then I have another piece of paper that again, may be too tall, but we'll make it work. So I'm gonna fold it in half and it would go over here. And I think with it, I'll just tear it down. I'm going to make a little pencil mark so that I tear it right about there. I could also cut it as well. All right, so now let's add some distress inks to these edges. So this is going to layer over this piece, and then this piece is going to layer over that piece. And we're going to, in a sense, have a pocket here, here, and here. So we'll have three pockets on this piece. So I think what I want to do now is I want to glue these together. So I'm going to start with the one closest, using this as my guide, making sure I've got it somewhat center. And I'll put just a small bead of glue on these edges to make my pocket. And I'll do the same here. and then flip this over, and then I want to do the same on this side. All 
All right, so this is going to go over my page. So I'll get a page out so you can see the idea. So this will go over my page and I'll have a pocket here, here, here. I'll also have pockets on the other side. So let's go ahead and decorate this. I have, I don't even know if I have the big sheet. Here it is. I have one of the sheets from the pattern papers that I tore out some of the butterflies and moths. And let's just tear this. And then I'll go around the edges with some distress ink. All right, so now I want to kind of do a little collage here. I have little scraps of some music. I have some words, lace. I have the label. So this was a new label stamp, vintage label 102. And I stamped it in different colors of distress oxide and then kind of went around the edge with some distress ink. In fact, I may kind of add a little bit more because I want it to have more of a vintage look in the middle. So I want to make a little collage where this is on here. Maybe this will go up there. I've got a little piece of music here. So maybe I'll put that where it's kind of behind. And I have this uh, batik fabric and the word stay while. This is a rubber stamp, part of a set. And I just stamp it on scraps of paper. So whenever I trim a book page or whatever, I will save these little pieces. And then I'll use one of these word stamps as they're really small. And they fit perfectly on there. So I think that's kind of the little grouping that I want to put on here. So I'm going to kind of glue these together. So I'll glue this music to the back of this label first. It's kind of at the top. We'll still have the opening here, so I don't want to close this off. So I'll put it close to the top. Then I'll put the butterfly or moth. I don't remember which one this is. And then we'll layer the word onto the fabric and then the fabric to a scrap of lace. I'll flip it over and let's do the other side in the same fashion. So we're going to have the label, the little butterfly. I've got a little piece of music here. All right, so now I kind of have a little grouping here. I do have some little rhinestones, so I'm gonna grab one of these for some bling. And I know that I wanna glue this over my page. This is a gel print that I scanned into my computer, and then I changed the hues on this. So I've got a grouping of these that have a bunch of different colorways, but it's the same pattern. And I wanna glue this over the edge. So I'll open this up and put some glue right along this edge and right along this edge. Make sure it's butt up against the edge. And I'm putting it in the middle so that when you're in your journal, you kind of have a variation of height from top to bottom. Because if you put everything across the bottom, then your journal will be really thick across the bottom. So I'm trying to put some things in the middle. And I'll flip this over and glue this side. So now I need to put some journal cards in the pockets. I've gone ahead ahead of time and did a couple, but I'll do one of them in person or live, if you will, in this video. This is the curly swirly stamped on top of another one of the pattern papers from the paper pack. And then I took a piece of fabric and then just zigzag stitched it across the top. So that's going to go in the back. Then I have some craft color cardstock that I think I want to stamp on. So I'm going to line these up side by side. Oh, had a little bit of glue on my finger, so it stuck to it. And then I've got the henna mandala, and we're going to stamp that right in the middle. So I'm using the points of the stamp to kind of gauge where I want to put it. So it stamps half of it on one and the other. I've already gone around the edges with some distress ink, but I want to also change 
the way this looks and make it look more like a tag. And I've got an old gift card here that I've cut off the corner. So I'm gonna line it up on my paper to make a little tag. So if you're ever one of those people that just can't make a perfect tag because you can't keep them uh, straight, it goes wonky on you, well, here's the tip. Use an old gift card, cut off the corner, and then you'll have this as a template every time that you want to just cut off the edges to make tags, you get that tag shape. So the next thing I wanna do is I've got a slot ID punch. I'm just going to line this up. I've got both of them in at the same time and punch. And then I have some fabric and I think I just want, oh, probably about that much. So I'll just do two little pieces here. I usually just tear one inches strips uh, so that I have little strips available to me. I'll poke this through the hole, kind of pull away any excess, and then we're going to go over to the sewing machine here in just a moment, and I'm going to stitch on top of that. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could glue it, you could staple it, you could hand stitch it. So don't think that you have to do it a certain way. You could also, if you cut them a little bit longer, tie a knot in them. I like doing this flat because I am adding so much bulk with my pocket, I, but I wanna add the fabric, but I don't necessarily want the knot. All right, so we're gonna go over the sewing machine and I'll just stitch across these. I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set for a zigzag stitch. Mine is set about 2.5, 2.5 for both the stitch length and width. I've used a regular needle, regular thread. I do highly recommend that you get new thread whenever you're working on your junk journals because there's nothing like the frustration of having breaking thread. And if you have an old thread collection, they have a tendency to be brittle and break. And I just stitch across. Simple as that. So you get the stitches. I'll do it one more time. Like so. Okay, so these are going to go in this pocket here, and then I have these tickets that I untied the bow by accident. These come in part of the subscription box, Wild and Free. You get a couple of these in that kit. Of course, now that I'm on camera, I can't tie a bow with the yarn. I'm fussing with it. All right, so I've got a little bow on here. I'm gonna cut off the excess, and that's gonna go in this little pocket there. So we've got these three different heights of journaling cards available in our pocket. And we'll flip it over. Do these the same way. And then I have another page, same concept, but this time I use two pieces of paper that I folded in half, and then I did a book page that I stamped a different color. I layered a doily that I sprayed, and some more paper and a stamped image, so that I have a pocket here. And then when we glue this over our page, so I'll go ahead and line this up, I'll have another pocket. And I just decided that yes, it is repeating the same concept, they are a different look, but I like to kind of repeat the concept in my journals, but make them a little bit different sometimes. Because when you come to this page later in the journal, you will be like, hey, this is kind of like the other one, but a little different. And then my doilies, I didn't glue them shut yet until I got my page together. They do stick out past my page. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue on both of those. Press this into place. And on this one, I made a larger journal card. So this is five by four and a quarter. And I used the swirl border, curly swirly. I can't remember now, I gotta look at it. Connected curl border, connected curl border. I like it because I can stamp it all the way around and if my edge of my paper is longer than my stamp. Well, if I'm really careful, I can continue that look by stamping it right next to it. But I thought that would be kind of cute. 
to put back here. So we have all this writing space. We have different textures and color. And then if we flip this side over, I happen to have a scrap of this teal paper. So I thought it would look good on this side. So when you get to your page, let's say you have several. Let me get another book page. Let's pretend. And you would flip open your page. And then there would be the other side. And if you come to this side, that's what it would look like. Well, I hope you enjoy seeing a cute little pocket idea, maybe a little bit different from what you're normally using by moving the pockets up in the middle of the journal instead of always being at the bottom or at the top. Let's see what you can do. Go through your stash, find some different papers and pieces that you have and make your own take on a pocket that you can put. And I would say mine was a triple and a double pocket. So figure out what you can do for it over the side of the page pocket. Share it in the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group on our event and we will enter you in a drawing where you can win a $10 off coupon to my shop. So. It's a great way to share, and if you have a tutorial, definitely share the link as well, because I'd love to see your take on this same type of style. All right, everybody, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Check the description box below for links to the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, as well as supplies that I use. Know I go live on Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope you'll come join us, hang out with us while we make a journal. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye.